the time of this story, my parents were divorced and no longer living together. At the time when this happened, it was around 10 at night in the winter. My mom had left me home alone to go to the corner store for some last minute groceries. I had two dogs who often barked for no reason, so when they started barking, I thought nothing of it. I was in my room, and from downstairs, I heard a rattle as though someone had closed a drawer in the kitchen. Being only eight at the time, I was scared, so I ran to the bathroom and shut myself in. My dogs were whining and barking downstairs and then suddenly stopped. I could hear the hallway creaking coming towards the bathroom that I was in, and then I heard my father's voice repeating, Here, doggy, doggy, over and over while whistling. I was very confused since at the time I knew nothing of the paranormal, and of course my father hadn't been in the house for years. The voice sounded exactly like my father, but not quite human. I haven't experienced much since then, but now it's came back. I have severe OCD, so when I heard the whistling, I blamed it on my imagination, but then I heard my mother shout my name from downstairs. She was at work. It didn't sound human at all at the time, but it was still her voice. I followed the advice I got from TikTok and ignored it. When I was around six, I vividly remember seeing stuff all of the time. Here are just a few examples of some things I would see. One night, I stayed the night at my grandparents' house, and I was in the living room watching Love Come Softly with my grandmother. Well, I have to go to the bathroom, so I get up, and in the hallway where that bathroom is, I stop and see a man. This man is creepy, seems like he's barely human, and he's looking right at me, holding a knife. I remember seeing this and running to tell my grandma. She said grandpa searched the whole house, including the attic, and found nothing. Sometimes I would also see towels that seemed to be floating, and I remember it looked like towels were floating down the hallway once. I used to see creatures everywhere around me all the time, and when I would lay in bed, they would come up to me and stuff. But my question to you is, do you think that was just me being a kid, or do you think I was seeing something? So I just wanted to add some input at the end of this. Um, I think it's definitely possible that you were just, you know, a kid with an overactive imagination. And I think the best way to answer that is, do you see stuff now? Because if no, then yeah, it's possible that was just your kid brain doing kid brain things, which is fine. Where I grew up only took about a two minute walk before you were on the edge of the Appalachian Trail. So it's really not a surprise that throughout my life, I've had some pretty unexplainable things occur. But the most recent and ongoing one that worries me the most is happening now. I take care of my seven-year-old niece and six-year-old nephew, and we moved into where we live now three years ago. Well, since the day we moved in, we have always had some kind of paranormal experiences, like I constantly see shadows and figures. There was one time I was home alone, and I heard a family member's voice right in front of me, and it said my name. When the oldest was around four, I started using a mobile spirit box. I knew better, but I was curious, and I knew better than to communicate back. One time, it said, scratch. I didn't think anything of it, and I was very convinced it was fake or something, but the next morning, I woke up my niece, and she said she had a scratch going from the top of her throat to her thigh. I thought maybe it was an imprint from something she slept on, but the scratch was puffy and stayed there for days. Fast forward a few months, and the whole situation happened again with my nephew, spirit box, and everything. Ever since we moved in, the kids refuse to sleep in their own room, and they say that there's an evil man in there. I would try different things to get them to sleep in their room at night, such as buying nightlights and fairy lights, because I was thinking they were just scared of the dark. But every night without fail at 2.30 in the morning, the oldest would wake up screaming and saying no and run into my room with tears streaming down her face. She never would tell me why she was running. It wasn't until recently that she finally told me about her dreams and the things she saw. She said that no one would hurt her in her dreams, but there was this really tall man with a trench coat and top hat that would just sit and stare and smile. She said he was completely black and all she could see was sharp white teeth and glowing eyes as his finger was over his lips to tell her to shush. I was still skeptical of this until one night that I went to go downstairs and there was a shadow at the bottom of the stairs that had to be at least 6'8". Ever since then, the youngest child has been lashing out and threatening me and his sister and is constantly mad. He used to be so kind and honestly, I have no idea what's going on. Several months ago, we, we being at least three people, including myself, heard something upstairs mimicking my daughter's cries when she was with us. And then it would happen when she wasn't with us, but we could see her in the monitor and she was fast asleep, definitely not crying. Nothing happened for a really long time until recently, and then the last several nights, I feel a great sense of unease when I'm in her bedroom alone. It feels almost like I'm being watched or like something is going to happen. Well, last night, while waiting for my boyfriend to come to bed, I saw him walk by the foot of the bed to his side twice. I heard the footsteps, something crinkling on the floor, and I thought he'd come to bed, but something stopped me from moving or saying something. I was on my side of the bed, facing away from his side anyways, and then I heard his footsteps downstairs and noticed the bedroom door was closed. He's on night shift this week, and I'm afraid to go to bed. And then they sent an update a few weeks later. 
So super fun update, laying in bed trying to fall asleep and I sensed something come into the room through the door behind me. The air smelled like vomit, rancid, then it felt like something was pressing down on my body. I couldn't move. Then I was afraid when the pressure released to still move. Something grabbed my calf. I used to live in Poland and I still come every few summers to my hometown. It's a really small town, like almost a village with a lot of farmland. I spent my childhood on this one specific meadow, meaning it was very nostalgic to me. Well, at around 6 p.m. on this night, I leave my grandmother's house. It was summertime, so the sun was at its peak, and it was hot and bright out. So, seemed like a perfect time to go to that meadow. I began my walk, and it was a decently short one, and I was walking past houses. They were all pretty close to this meadow and used by civilians of the town. There were lots of dogs in this area that were always barking, so I wasn't too bothered by the noise since I was used to it all the time. Well, as soon as I reached the meadow, the barking stopped instantly. No signs of bees, and there usually was. Suddenly, I'm hit with shivers down my spine and feeling really uneasy about it, but I brushed it off and walked up the hill to this meadow. When I get there, I look around and notice that there's no one there except for this one woman. She was brunette, and she was swaying in a ripped dress back and forth. I really didn't think much of it since it was a pretty popular spot, but then I started to feel more uneasy than I already did. The girl began to turn around halfway, not noticing me. Her skin was all gray and withered, her dress torn up, her face slender matching the whole gray tone of her body. She didn't look human, and I was shook down to my core. I turned and began walking back down the hill, ignoring, trying not to bring any attention while my guts began to ache and my body was shaking. There are stories my family would tell me of a bride that roams the meadows at specific times of the day, and I always brushed it off as just a story, but was I mistaken? Is that who I encountered that day? What does everyone else think? Is it possible that I did? My grandma lives on a farm in the prairies in Canada. I practically grew up on that farm and go almost every weekend. My dad and his siblings all grew up there. The farm has always been my favorite place. And this particular weekend, my two younger cousins were staying on the farm as well, so the house was a bit packed. Me, my grandma, my dad, my dad's girlfriend, my aunt, my uncle, and my two little cousins. I'm the oldest cousin in the family, and therefore I'm also everyone's favorite, so my little cousins didn't really give me a break. Around sunset, I was out at my archery range with my cousins when all of the parents came out to watch the sunset. When everyone was out there, I thought it would be a perfect time to sneak away from everyone and chill. I texted my friend who lived on the road and asked if she wanted to meet halfway and hang out for a bit. She said yes, and I asked my dad if I could take my quad. He said sure, but to be back before dark. I got my stuff together and off I went. As I was driving away from my yard, I felt like I was leaving something behind. Not like an actual physical item, but like some evil presence. It was like the further I got, the better I felt. I dismissed the feeling and thought it was just because I was excited to see my friend. Anyways, we met up and hung out for a long time, and that's when I realized it was getting really dark. My dad ended up coming to where me and my friend were, so I hopped on my quad to go home and my dad took my friend home. As I was driving, I got a really bad feeling. When I left that spot, it was already dark, but now it was so dark I couldn't see my own hand in front of my face. I ended up grabbing my phone flashlight to try and see into the darkness, but it wasn't working, and it, this is where it gets really scary. I was able to see a small spot in front of me of light, and that's when I realized I was being watched. I was so scared I just kept my eyes glued to the ground. Then I heard something following me from the tree line and next to me. It was very close. At this point, I could feel my heart in my throat, and I began to hear what sounded like a person imitating the wind, like a soft breath that went on forever. That's when I decided it wasn't worth it. And then I felt something chasing me. I got into my garage and sat down, catching my breath on the verge of tears. I called my dad and told him what happened. He was understanding and told me just to get ready for bed. I know this may not be the scariest thing, but it was the scariest thing that ever happened to me. Today, I would like to tell you all about my childhood home. From the ages of three to six, I was living in a pretty haunted home that was over a hundred years old. This will be a bunch of stories all meshed up into one. For starters, I do remember me and my sister had these bedrooms that had a door between connecting them, not to be confused with the Jack and Jill bathroom. This door directly connected the bedrooms. I remember sitting in my room with her one time around maybe 8 p.m. We were just playing dolls or something and we heard someone talking. My dad has worked night shift the majority of my life, so we went to my mom's room to ask if she was watching a video or something, and she wasn't. We go back to my room, and then we're talking, and it's still happening. We try to ignore it, but we realized it was coming from my closet. At this point, I'm absolutely horrified, and my sister was just intrigued, so she opened the door to the closet, and, of course, nothing. But then, the room went completely silent. 
Similar to that, I've always slept with the door to her room open because I was so scared of being in my room alone. I remember once I was watching Hannah Montana on my Dora Box TV and seeing a figure in the room. We used to watch Bigfoot as a family for whatever reason, so in my head I was totally convinced that Bigfoot was in my home. This also helps put into perspective how big this shadow figure truly was. I remember staring in fear, and then it vanished. My sister and I also had our ghosts, and it was just a normal thing to us that we each had a ghost. I don't remember the name she had for her ghost, but mine was Bicycle, and no, I don't know how to ride a bike, so I have zero idea why that was her name. She had a very motherly feeling. I remember every time I fell asleep, she would blow on my neck, and it was so soothing. The first time this happened, I'd fallen out of a super long staircase, and I was laying on the couch with a nosebleed, and I fell asleep crying. I woke up and felt someone blowing on my neck. I asked my mom about it, and she said that no one had been in the living room. Every time I was upset or anything while falling asleep, she would always do this. It was so comforting. Around the time the house was built, we believed that they probably had servants because her home had a butler's pantry. I've always assumed she could have been a nanny for the children at the time of the house being built. Another time I was outside playing on the trampoline by myself and I saw a completely translucent woman walking down the road. I stared at her as she walked and realized that she didn't have visible legs. It was literally as if she was floating. I've stopped being able to see things as I've grown older and experienced things such as this, but I know that everything I experienced in this house was absolutely real. I never felt like I was in danger. I felt safe with them and like they were taking care of me. I don't believe there were many in the home, but I am at least aware of around three spirits. As of right now, that's all of the stories that I can remember. And that's the end of that story. This was a wholesome one. I haven't gotten many wholesome ones picked out for this, so that was great. Also, this recipe, 10 out of 10. We love a brookie. I'm hoping that you'll be able to help me make sense of this mysterious childhood companion that I had. I did post about him on Reddit and in Supernatural forums several years ago, and no one had any answers for me. I'll start by providing a little bit of background. I was born and raised in central Indiana, so not paranormal hotspots by any means. My childhood home was a suburban brick built in the early 90s, unassuming, idyllic, and perfect to raise your children in. I adored this house. I would never feel anything but safe there. I was never given any reason to be afraid of any part of it. I've been a huge paranormal geek my whole life, and for years I've heard a lot of warnings online about tall shadow people in hallways. Apparently, they're an omen of some sorts. Demonic, dangerous, bad news. If I saw one, I should worry, because something was definitely afoot. My tall shadow man wasn't like this. I cannot recall what age I was when I first started noticing him, but my earliest memories of him started around the ages of 7 or 8. He was nameless for quite a while, but one day at around the age of 12, that changed. I woke up and knew with such certainty that his name was Finnett, like he had whispered it into my ear when I was sleeping. More likely, I'd heard the name somewhere and took a liking to it, but either way, it stuck. I'm not sure what Svenet was hanging around for, but I'm almost certain he wasn't out to hurt me or warn me of something, or even scare me. His presence in my home wasn't even alarming to me. I'd catch sight of him and greet him verbally by name and then go about my business, and he would literally just coexist. He wasn't a hallucination or a trick of the light, I'm almost certain. He appeared out of the corner of my eye, and I'd often run to face him, blink or turn away, and turn back, and he'd still be there. He came and went as he pleased, and he had no set schedule. He would always just show when he showed, day or night, rain or shine. He always stood in the doorway or the entrance of the closet. He was a shadow, black and bottomless, between seven and eight feet tall. He always got kind of mad when I'd try to explore or push his boundaries. I would shine a light at him to see if I could reveal something or if something would reflect back. He'd disappear in the space between blinks. Same way if I noticed him and walked around trying to see him at a different angle or tried to touch him or got close at all. The fear I felt when I upset him was sort of the stabs into your stomach that ache. It was like the only time Sven had ever felt like a threat to me. Even then, it was like a slap on the wrist. I'd let it go after a while. I took his warnings for what they were, and I never attempted to enter or exit any room while he was there. Just because I felt safe in the presence didn't mean I wanted to try and scoot past him. I spoke to my little sister about Sven, and she says she saw him too, but far less than I did. My room was his favorite little haunt space, apparently. I suffered from horrible night terrors, but on the days that I spotted Sven, I usually slept soundly and had fairly pleasant dreams if I dreamt at all, which is a rarity for me. Could that be a coincidence? Maybe. So we moved out of my childhood home about four years ago, and right now, right before I turn 18, I haven't seen him since. I think he was tied to that house somehow, although I have no idea how. There's no history behind it to explore. The neighborhood was built on indigenous land, but that's about all the history we know. Neither my mom nor my dad have any memory of him, although they agree that the house had a heightened energy. My mom seems to think that maybe he was drawn to my sister and I to guard us in a way. But I just feel like if that was the case, why didn't he follow us whenever we moved? It's like he was attached to the house. 
So that's the end of the story, and it sounds to me like he definitely was a protective spirit that haunted the land or the house, but just wanted to protect and watch out for you guys. So I think I may have encountered a not deer several times. The first run-in with this creature happened when I was driving down a back road in Charleston, Tennessee with my mom. It was dark out, probably around 10.30 at night, and as we were driving around a corner, I saw something move on the left side of the road. I assumed it was a deer, we see them often, so I alerted my mom to slow down, and she comes to a stop as the deer rushes in front of our car but stops abruptly to stare very deeply at me. The deer then slowly walks past the car, only to stand on the side of the road and attempt to circle our car. My mom, now terrified, tried to drive away, but it followed. It ran alongside the car and craned its neck to stare into my eyes. My mom sped up to get away from it, and when it finally broke away, it ran off into the woods. And now, I have nightmares of this experience. In these nightmares, it's never gotten me, but it's come close. I'll hear whispering in the back of these nightmares, but I can only pick out names. This happens every few months, and I don't know what to do. I'm scared this thing's gonna get closer and closer until it inevitably gets me in real life. Any advice on this would be appreciated, as I feel like I am literally being hunted. Around 13 years ago, my family and I lived in a house that I am certain was haunted. My sister and mom would get sleep paralysis and could see shadow people sometimes out of the corner of their eyes. According to them, I used to face the wall and talk to something, but if they asked me, I would just say, I'm talking to no one. I don't remember any of this, but my mom isn't the type to lie, so I do believe it happened. So anyway, we moved into two different houses since, and the one that we're living in now is definitely strange. Sometimes I'll see shadow people out of the corner of my eye, especially when I'm alone, and especially at night. But every single time when I see them, I turn to face them, and poof, they've disappeared. One time my sister thought she saw me walking across the hallway as she came upstairs, but when she walked into my room, I was wearing a completely different outfit, and I was just sat on my bed the whole time. So it definitely couldn't have been me, but she was sure she saw something, and that something looked just like me. I also hear footsteps in the attic, especially a couple of years ago, and I would hear it every day when my sister would too. I can remember one time I was on the phone with my friend and it turned into a loud, angry stomp. Even my friend heard it. I'll hear doors open and lights turn on and off, and the other day from upstairs, I thought I heard the cabinets in the kitchen opening and closing when I was alone. I'll hear voices sometimes too, but they're so faint that I can't make out what they're saying. Really, what I'm trying to figure out is if this current haunting could be related to that house from 13 years ago, because some of the things do overlap. Has something followed my family? It's rare that I ever have a bad dream, and the only time I've gotten bad dreams is when my grandpa died and two times two years ago. I have experienced death and hauntings, as I didn't live in a safe place back in Brazil and I've experienced the paranormal. I have a huge fear of people breaking in and my parents installed cameras because of it. In 2022, my house was recently remodeled and it was so recent to the point that when I was asleep by the time they finished, my dad was downstairs and I was upstairs sleeping. I was with my mom because I cannot sleep on my own. By the time they finished, my dad came upstairs and went to bed. But I had already fallen asleep and my dream was about me being downstairs in the newly remodeled house, which I had no idea how it looked. We only did small additions, and one of the additions was a couch, and I was sitting on that couch that has a window to the outside. In this dream, I had an undeniable urge to look outside of that window. So I did, and saw a pair of eyes staring back at me. I got scared and ran to see if the front door was locked, which in the dream it wasn't. This person was in a clown costume, and got in, and hurt me, which is when I woke up. Skip to a couple days later, and I had another nightmare, but this time I was awake, and the same clown appeared, and hurt me again. After he hurt me, he pushed me onto my side, and I watched him slither away into the closet. I told my parents, who of course said it was just a dream, but I saw that clown when I was fully awake sliding into one of the bedrooms. The most recent occurrence happened when I got home to an unlocked door when everyone in my home said that they had locked that door before. It went as far as my mom checking the cameras to make sure that she saw herself locking the door, and she saw herself double-check the lock. My nana owns property in Iowa that we visit often. It's a little farmhouse tucked into the hills and forests of that area. They have around 20 to 30 acres of land. My nana is very in touch with the paranormal and is certain that she's seen a walker on that land, among other things. Today I have two stories to share with you about her farm, and all of these experiences happened from when I was around 12 to the age of 15. The first one is the least scary. The most recent October, I spent the night at her farm. Her bedroom faces the kitchen of her house and she sleeps with the door open, so if you look through the doorway you can see straight into the kitchen and the hallway that leads to the garage. Well that night I slept in her bed and I went to sleep just fine and slept soundly for most of the night. I think it was around 3.30 in the morning when I woke up but didn't know why. 
Nana was sound asleep in bed next to me. I look up towards the kitchen, straight back, and I could hardly see anything except for the red blinking stove light. Suddenly, I hear a tap from the kitchen, like someone knocked on the counter or fridge. The knocking gets quieter, but more frequent, the more I look, until it sounds like a chorus of taps, as if a group of 15 people were all tapping on things in the kitchen to sound the exact same. I woke up my Nana and asked her what it was and what that sound was, and her response was simply, they do that every night, but they won't hurt you. The second story is a bit on the scarier side. A few years back, I was spending the night at her farm again. For context, she has two dogs, an Australian shepherd named Zoe, who is very smart, and a husky named Willow, who isn't scared of anything. She had a cabin deeper back in the woods of her property where we would hike to at night to sit around a fire and have hot chocolate. It was around 10 p.m. when we left, so it was completely dark outside, and all we took was one flashlight to guide our way. Well, we start hiking through these woods and the two dogs were not on leashes because they were very well trained and knew to always come back. The dogs run ahead to the cabin, leaving us alone hiking in the dark. Well, we reach the top of the hill and come to a clearing, expecting the dogs would be there waiting for us, but neither were. Nana was about to whistle for them to come back, but suddenly we hear a crashing of branches and leaves. Willow comes bolting out of the thicket, but Zoe is nowhere to be seen. Willow has her tail tucked tight between her legs and her ears down. She runs to my Nana and stands right in front of her. Remember how I said Willow's not scared of anything? It's really alarming that she's scared right now. And then everything goes silent. Nana starts speed walking to the cabin and beckons me to follow. As I'm walking, I make the mistake of looking into the tree branches and see something long and white perched on one. Once we're safely inside of the cabin, Nana checks for Zoe's location on her little air tag collar and it says location cannot be found. We end up immediately going back to the farmhouse hoping that Zoe found her way back there, but nothing. We wake up the next morning and there Zoe is laying sleeping in the yard, looking terrified. Zoe was okay other than that and the weird medium-sized slit she had between her eyes. It wasn't bleeding, but it was scabbed over and it was very obvious that something had cut her. After checking her AirTag location again, it said that the last recorded area was around 9 miles away, which is not a normal area for her to go to. None of us are certain what, but we know for a fact that something did happen to us and those dogs that night. This is one of the most inexplainable experiences that me or my Nana have had on that farm and anywhere else. My dad was in a band in the early 2000s and him and his buddies would go to recording studios around Seattle and a few of them were pretty haunted. One in particular just had unexplainable things happen all the time, like one time someone had fallen asleep on the couch when everyone was partying downstairs. The next morning, the friend wakes up and says, Dang, you guys partied hard last night. You went till like 2 in the morning. To which my dad replied, We left right after you fell asleep and no one was here. The most haunted place out of that building was the basement basketball court where boxes and stuff were. The door to the basement was super thick, heavy concrete, and you would have to have a second person sometimes to even open it. One night, my dad was helping getting a band loaded out and he had to go to the basement to grab something by himself. When he walked in the room, he had a bad feeling. He goes to grab the box and heard a super heavy concrete door move, but no one was there. He got this feeling of just something downright evil all around him, and he grabbed what he had to and never went back in that room by himself again. He said something wasn't right. So tis the season for ghost walks, and that's exactly what I was doing on this night. I was actually going through a pretty historic cemetery in my hometown. Nothing creepy ever happens to me on ghost walks, but this was the day that it did. As I was walking with my group through the back of the very dark, very notoriously haunted East Hill Cemetery, I saw someone kind of dunk behind one of the headstones. I don't know why, but I kept watching. This wasn't like a ooh jump scare ghost walk, it was a storytelling one, so I kept watching, waiting for them to come back out, and they never did. For context, I work overnights at my gas station job, and I've done it for a very long time. I live outside of a reservation in my hometown. It was foggy on this night a while back on my way home, and I drove past a very thick part of the woods to get into town. Well, just before I hit that reservation grounds, there's an eerie swamp along this road. It was just a normal night, but for me, once I began passing through the swamp by my house, my headlights caught sight of a terrifying-looking creature. Immediately, I hit the brakes, not wanting to come into contact with whatever this was. It looked a lot like a human, fully naked, not even a hair on its head. It was bare-skinned everywhere, and on all fours. As soon as I locked eyes with it, I didn't get the feeling of being scared, but more of a feeling of dread deep in my chest. The scariest part was that it had these huge glowing orange eyes. I blink and there's no longer a creature. It was a fox standing there staring at me. I knew what I saw, but I was really confused on how one minute it was that humanoid creature and then just an animal with the blink of an eye. This happened a few months ago now, but even then I still can see it in my mind as if I had just witnessed it. 
I don't like saying the word of what I believe it was at all because I believe it draws them to you, but I truly believe that's what I experienced. Shortly after this, the woods behind my home no longer are just woods. You can always feel something lurking as soon as dusk falls. Sometimes you'll even hear it say your name or catch a glimpse of eyes watching your every move. It has beyond shaken me up to this day and confused me, but I'm just glad I found somewhere to possibly share my story. Okay, y'all, that is the end of the story, and it's the end of the terrifying series this October. I have had so much fun doing this, and I'm definitely going to do a few episodes here and there, but this was so much fun. Thank you guys for hanging out with me this month, and I hope you had as much fun as I did.